Many people regard you as a personification of Ubuntu. What do you understand Ubuntu to be? In the old days, when we were young, <clears throat> a traveler through a country would stop at a village <clears throat> and uh, he didn't have to ask for food or for water. Once he stops, the people give him food, entertain him. That is one aspect of Ubuntu, but it will have various aspects. Ubuntu does not mean that people should not enrich themselves. The question, therefore, is are you going to do so in order to enable the community around you uh, to be able to improve? These are the important things in life. And if one can do that, we have done something very important which will be appreciated. From WBRN Radio in Boston and on the Boston Red Network, the Open Source Report on the 6th of August, 2017. We're broadcasting from the Jerry Pippen Memorial Broadcast booth here. This is inspired by an article in uh, what the uh, Trump people call the Amazon Washington Post. As we normally start our open source reports, and incidentally this will be on uh, many of our channels uh, and also our program sets here at WBRN. Uh, the political program uh, Boston Red and because it is a it goes into the political sphere we'll start it off with uh, open culture uh, by a woman at a uh, red hat uh, red hat is a major contributor to the uh, colonel and also at the same time it is a supplier of open sourced uh, Linux and let's just get to Linux uh, one minute here as we start this off. Uh, it all started with the Linux kernel written in C and Assembler. The Linux kernel was uh, released uh, in September of 1991. That will be uh, 26 years ago uh, next month. And here at Cranston, we went into business in 1988 before there was a Linux uh, kernel. But we did sell uh, Linux uh, two, uh, excuse me, Unix two kits. It's a subset of of uh, Unix. So the present uh, kernel is uh, for uh, point uh, one three. Let me just make sure that is right. That was released uh, just a few days ago. That is release candidate three. Uh, yeah, four point uh, one uh, three. We are using now, they call it the long-term kernel, uh, uh, 4.9.40. And the stable kernel is uh, 4.12.5. So that's what we call the stable uh, kernel. Anyway, we do have releases also of this kernel. And it is around this kernel that we're going. Primarily, we'll be talking about Google. Google does use at present the Linux kernel. They are uh, talking about moving from it to something called Fuchsia. So we have uh, many years here to talk about it. Let's start out with open culture. Uh, we begin our program uh, here with Ubuntu. And it is explained uh, by the late president of South Africa, President uh, Nelson Mandela, the concept of Ubuntu. And we've been following the concept at Cranston since 1988. So it's been a period of time. This particular article is uh, by uh, Deliza. Uh, let me just make sure I get her name correct here. Deliza Alexander. She was writing on the 30th of May, uh, 2017. An open source uh, culture, a unique way that you work together as a community. Uh, you can uh, create a strategic cooperative uh, advantage. 
Red Hat, my home for the last 15 years, was born out of the Linux community. For years, uh, maintaining our open and collaborative culture was relatively simple. We just hired as many open source collaborators as we could find, people who were already uh, embroiled in uh, the uh, principle of openness, like uh, transparency and collaboration. As a leader of the uh, People's Team, our HR organization, my job was mostly to make sure we didn't uh, mess the culture up. These days, though, we have grown uh, beyond uh, 10,000 associates, she call them. Uh, we call them workers, but that we won't quibble. The size of our organization and the scope of our uh, ambitions mean uh, that we need uh, to hire more and more people who don't necessarily have the extensive experience with uh, doing things the open source way. And we talk about the open source way, and you, you'll see when we uh, put the memo up that caused the uh, commotion of late uh, at Google and about uh, what Google is about, in other words, the Google culture, and how to make it mesh with uh, the open source, uh, truly open source c uh, culture. Google does use the uh, Linux uh, kernel, but uh, their uh, particular um, uh, Android, but this is in their Android uh, that will be going uh, probably to future, but it is a... Um, semi-open uh, kernel. It's not completely open, uh, so it's not completely open source. But their uh, business is an open cultural uh, model. If we look at where Google is, and this is where the uh, rubber meets the road. Google, uh, like any uh, capitalist enterprise, uh, Red Hat whatsoever, they have to move their enterprise to all points of the globe, particularly uh, Google. Google, uh, besides being the Android developer of its on your smartphones, they've dabbled in many things, self-driving autonomous uh, cars, and other kinds of things, even Internet access uh, with balloons. We've done workshops at uh, some of the Google developer workshops. Uh, and we talked about that, uh, wireless Internet access. That's the use of balloons, the use of... Uh, very uh, to have low flying uh, satellites, you have to get the internet to the people. They've also went even in the smartphone uh, development to make a cheaper uh, smartphone. So they are involved in many technologies that affect the world as a whole. And then you're talking about many, many cultures uh, coming uh, together there. A little history of, of IT uh, here, and we'll get back to Ms. Uh, Alexander. Uh, that IT uh, in the 80s when I first uh, encountered it. My first encounter was on a VAC, but anyway, besides that, was not uh, doing uh, the old punch cards uh, for political uh, science research. But anyway, uh, uh, moving a bit uh, forward uh, from that, in uh, the 60s is when IBM, we've had an association with IBM over 20 years also, as a uh, developer and as uh, one of their uh, resellers. Anyway, nonetheless, um, this uh, association in uh, with IBM and their uh, work uh, to what's now called a multiculturalism, at the time it was affirmative action, they did actively recruit and hire uh, African Americans and other uh, people of color and a woman. In fact, I was talking with a lady who had been around a long time. And she is still around uh, today uh, in uh, the uh, data business, actually. Uh, she's in now one of the largest uh, concerns around. But she was saying when she started uh, out in the business in the late 60s, early 70s, there were more women in. Uh, programmers than there are now and I would not doubt that at all because the climates uh, have changed and we'll just give a little brief history as we sort of moving along with this in the 60s and 70s women were going into these uh, areas 
particularly if you look at NASA, there uh, was an African la- American lady there. It was a mathematician, is the one responsible uh, for actually doing the math behind major portions of the uh, space program. And of course, there's the Admiral uh, that uh, in the Navy uh, that was responsible for much of computing. Uh, there, so in other words, there were leaders there. Uh, lots of what happened, and we'll uh, go forward here. Uh, when the so called mainframe jockeys, that's a user blue type, so I've been a member of user blue. It was founded actually, uh, I believe, the year I was born, so in the early 50s. So, in other words, those are the mainframe jockeys, they're still around today. Uh, doing uh, some of the mainframe functions. There are organizations still uh, using uh, mainframes primarily in the banking uh, industry and they are also uh, training uh, people to fill in the gaps and COVID's words COBOL is still around although uh, other um, OS's <clears throat> excuse me have, have moved dominant. What does it meant to do is just to explain exactly what happened and then we went to something called ob- objective programming. That is when C came in. That replaced many of the mainframe jockeys, and we got the uh, personal computers. Now, Unix was already there uh, on uh, the Sperry, uh, excuse me, on the Sparse uh, platform. Uh, they had, uh, and he's still, Oracle still sells some of those uh, uh, workstations. But that was run on a uh, Unix. Mr. Ritchie and company got Unix which uh, Linux is uh, patterned after. It's a basic same subset involved there, a little bit of that. But uh, it had always been a uh, collaborative program. Unix finally landed with AT&T. Uh, it came out of AT&T Labs, but people collaborated on it. What does this mean? It's not an indiv- It was never an individualistic program. It was always a collaborative effort going back to Ms. Alexander's uh, article here. As uh, we look at the uh, market opportunities ahead of us, we've also started to see that uh, we as uh, red hatters need to open our minds to the possibilities that there are other areas where our culture might be holding us back. Some of the uh, behavioral behaviors embedded in our culture weren't necessarily things we needed uh, to encourage or sustain in the future. Last year, we kicked off a project we dubbed uh, Scaling Our Culture for the Future. In uh, this uh, new article uh, series, I will share our journey of cultural uh, sustainment and transformation for the past uh, six months as we move through this phase. We were going to uh, cover this, but we won't spend as much time with what they are doing. But research shows in most organizations, you learn about two forces that shape an organization, culture. And we will be talking about culture at Google specifically. Behavior of your leaders and your people, uh, system and processes. But Red Hat and perhaps other open organizations, I found there are three uh, forces uh, shaping our culture. The open source influence. Now Google has some of this, but uh, now Google uh, must understand is uh, later, after the uh, dot-com uh, boom, that was a big uh, benchmarker. Leadership uh, behavior, she lists, and uh, systems and processes. Open source influence, uh, some of that is at Google. As I said above, we hire a lot of people from the open source community, no doubt. We, uh, they join us with the expectation that our company will work in uh, the transparent, collaborative, and uh, meritocracy uh, way that are typical of open source projects. We work and collaborate in these communities every day. You can see this influence in our work in things like our open decision uh, framework and uh, the Red Hat uh, multiplier, as well as in the way that we work together, both inside our company and outside. Yes. Leadership behavior. In an open organization, leadership is about influencing more than a job title. Now, this is something they'll make uh, clear in uh, our uh, 
uh, Google a part of this. This means that each and every uh, red hatter has the uh, potential to uh, lead and influence others. And of course, many of our managers, our executives have a lot of influence. Uh, their behavior matters a great deal, particularly in uh, changing uh, times. But in an open source organization, how each and every associate behaves matters particularly for those associates who others admire and look up to. Broadly speaking, we look at leadership as uh, any behavior that enables others and the organization to grow and complete. Systems and processes, this may not be intuitive, but uh, your uh, people system tools and processes such as the ones uh, used uh, performance reviews, promotions and hiring uh, can have a big impact on your culture. And this is what we'll see at Google. If you get uh, them wrong, uh, your culture will uh, suffer for it. If you get them right, or at least get uh, good enough, they will help reinforce the strength of the culture. And we're actually ending up our article. In the coming years, I'll share more about how we are approaching the two uh, projects and the impact uh, they're having. This is uh, Lisa Alexander. She is an executive vice president and the head uh, people officer at Red Hat. So we'll uh, we'll append her article uh, there, and now let's go to what caused the fire to uh, light here, uh, so to speak, is in the Washington Post. Is where we'll start this off, and I believe. Let me make sure that we got the. Uh, oops, wrong one. Uh, this is uh, written by uh, Cleve uh, Whitson Jr. Uh, on August the 5th, a Google engineer wrote that women may be uh, genetically unsuited for tech jobs. Women, of course, counted back. In a memo that uh, had rocketed uh, Silicon Valley this weekend, a software engineer at Google blasted the company's effort to increase the number of minorities and women in its ranks and leadership positions. And as reported by Motherboard uh, Gizmo, we'll get to that in just a minute, it was uh, posted on the internal um, forum by a male uh, software engineer entitled Google's Ideological Echo Chamber. Now, this would be the uh, cultural uh, of Google, as Ms. Alexander at Gateway, excuse me, at uh, Red Hat was talking about. The offer has not been defined. I imagine he's hiding, but his words have sparked a backlash. Critics say his sentiment reflects a tech, com- tech company culture that's on welcon- welcon- welcoming, even hostile to women and uh, people of color. A never fear, the engineer's words reflect the unspoken thoughts of many uh, in an industry dominated by white men. Now, this is where the political aspect uh, enters it. On our political broadcast at Boston Red, we uh, covered the uh, Women's March, and we use on one of our programs called Friday Java, uh, after uh, the uh, not only cup of coffee, but the Java language, uh, as a symbol, Google uh, announced efforts to increase a diversity and is being investigated on allegations of gender pay inequality uh, and did not respond to the uh, post. Anyway, let's get right on to it here. This is a, a lady's uh, blog post. Let me just get back and get who she is. And before we uh, read the uh, post itself. And this is kind of an oversimplification. We'll get to his, uh, the essay argues that uh, Google should stop its campaign to increase gender and uh, racial diversity and focus on ideological diversity. In other words, this particular person uh, would want uh, more conservatives to be there. He's evidently one of these people, and it's just an assumption uh, make America great again. Now, this is where a political sentiment or a, a, a political theme 
as uh, enunciated by the uh, DJ Trump administration, has permeated all of America. But Google is a little bit different. Its um, business model goes beyond the Make America Great Again America. It's a worldwide uh, business model, and they have to grapple with this as they have invested, uh, IBM also, in uh, what is euphemistically known as Africa. 122 uh, countries. And Google, excuse me, and IBM has uh, put in something called Watson. That's a supercomputer uh, learning center in Nairobi, uh, Kenya. The re- it, it says the reason don't, uh, women don't make up half the company's uh, technical and leadership position is because of genetic differences in uh, their uh, preferences and abilities. These differences may explain why we don't see equal representation of women in tech and leadership, the engineer wrote. We need to stop assuming that gender uh, gaps imply a sexism. Now, this is akin uh, to uh, climate denial, literally. The author, the uh, diversity efforts have created a politically uh, correct uh, monoculture that maintains it, its whole uh, by... Uh, shunning a dissent in a, to silence and making it easy for extreme and authoritarian policies to take root. Google's effort to achieve more uh, gender uh, equity and race, and race representation, special programs he calls, coding camp for girls, we've always uh, sponsored this, I have two daughters, anyway, leads uh, to discriminatory practices, I guess he's talking about a reverse uh, discrimination here. Uh, one of the things the uh, Trump administration has now decided they would investigate <coughs> and a voter suppression, anyway, uh, specifically uh, against uh, conservatives. Well, part of the problem here for us that have been around for a while, the entire IT structure changed uh, with the Internet. It went uh, from shops, you know, virtually independent shops, to a collaborative situation. We had something called the uh, dot-com boom under uh, Wild Bill Clinton in the, in the uh, 90s. And it went on and on and on, and finally it ceased uh, in around uh, 2000. The bubble burst, in other words. But with this bubble coming in uh, and the Internet distinguishing a cultural shift in initial uh, main thing of programming, although the women were there, uh, a lot of the people came out of the uh, military, which at that time was a different military. Their uh, women were not in, uh, quote-unquote, combat positions, although during the Great War they flew planes from point B to point uh, C and, and of course then we could have Vietnam. The reason I'm sort of moving around here is the history itself is not static. It's dynamic. And thus the dot com bubble ushered in open source. That's the point I'm trying to make and that is back to Ms. Alexander and Red Hat came along. We of course used Slack where we were there before Red Hat. And we are still around, uh, not as uh, as, uh, as popular there, when IBM certified uh, Red Hat. But he also certifies uh, an OS called Ubuntu. And that is on uh, desktops. But primarily we are talking here about uh, the uh, industry itself and how it is uh, set off. Uh, Delina Brown, uh, she sent a message to... She's the Vice President of Diversity, Integrity, and Governance. Said advanced to incorrect assumptions about the essay about gender. As what Ms. Brown had to say. And in the Washington Post, Gina McGregor wrote in March, just 1% of Google's uh, technical workers are African Americans a percentage that hasn't moved since 2014 in national disgrace. Erica Baker, uh, 
she's a uh, slack engineer who uh, on uh, CNBC an outspoken critic of systematic bias in the uh, tech industry now this is where we're going to her blog now Ms. Uh, Baker Google has uh, hint, uh, has hit uh, has seen hits of this in the past with uh, uh, workers is sharing blogs about their racist beliefs and occasionally internal uh, mailing uh, questions asking if uh, African people aren't more likely to be violent. We've seen that before. In fact, at a Google uh, present, I think it was a Google presentation to develop this presentation uh, that uh, there was a picture there of the angry African American woman. So you do uh, you do see that, uh, and it's not in uh, a uh, innocent thing. Now let's go here to Mrs. Uh, Miss uh, Bra- Erica Brown. And I'm disappointed, but uh, unsurprised by the news that an anti-diversity sexist manifesto is making the rounds of Google. This is not entirely new behavior. Google has hits of this uh, in the past with uh, workers uh, sharing uh, blog posts about their racist beliefs and occasionally internal uh, mailing uh, lists. Aside uh, from uh, how they are going to repair the damage of this event, which uh, there will be much, the most important question we should uh, be asking of leaders at Google, and uh, they should be uh, asking of themselves, why is the environment at Google such that uh, racists and sexists feel uh, supported and safe in uh, sharing their views in the company? What about a company's culture says, sends a message that sharing uh, sexism and racist and ra- sexism and racism will be accepted. This is back to Ms. Alexander's cultural piece uh, from uh, Red Hat. What has shaped the culture thus far to get to this point? And in short, Google's leadership should uh, do a uh, post mortem, a real one, on how the company gets uh, company got this place to this place uh, where they have experienced such catastrophic failure in their culture assuming it is indeed viewed as such the second most important question leaders at Google need to discuss is do we want this to be the environment where racists and sexists feel safe and supported to share their views now we've, we've seen the acceleration of these types of views coming uh, from the senior advisor Miller at the White House standing at the podium talking openly about uh, fascism and racist views and uh, poems about the Statue of Liberty. And we have Mr. Bannon, who is an advisor to the president. He is a strategic advisor, and he was uh, on uh, the uh, National, what was the National Defense Council? Anyway, he was removed from that. But nonetheless, this is a type of administration on America Great Again reinforces. Uh, Google was there before D.J. Trump. So we can't blame this on D.J. Trump alone. But he has enhanced these people and this idea of what is broadly called a white a privilege. And that is what this person is thinking about and is not good uh, for Google. The second most important question the need that uh, Google leads do we want to... Oh, oops, sorry about that. I got off a little bit here. Because saying a no to this question means that they have to uh, set policies to create an environment that is uh, not a safe harbor for bigots. It means uh, defining the real consequences for uh, demeaning, insulting, and ridiculing minorities, immigrants, physically, mentally uh, disabled. It means uh, angering of the high performers who are also bigots. It would uh, mean many uh, fights about free speech, what it means at a company. It would also mean that some people might quit including uh, some high performers. Well, uh, the carpenter did build a door. Uh, saying yes to these questions, uh, and uh, so it's clear choosing not to answer the questions is the equivalent of saying yes to it. In other words, uh, a demur is a yes. 
means a company uh, should give uh, up any notion of uh, being diverse and inclusive, saying uh, we want in the environment uh, environment that allows all opinions of free exchange of ideas. To uh, that question means a company has deemed uh, racism, sexism a viable option worthy of being a freely uh, exchanged instead of, uh, of the hate and bigotry that they are. The message will be heard loud and clear and by the targets of a said uh, hate and a bigotry. This will be the uh, antithetical uh, to any other attempts at building a diverse and inclusive company. Workers, as she calls employees, will tell their friends or the, or the media in this case about what the company is really about. Any effects to improve diversity will be hampered. Inclusion will be a non-starter since uh, employees uh, cannot feel included in an environment where their peers believe they aren't worthy of being there and uh, will uh, save on freely. Uh, Employees uh, cannot advance uh, in a system that is built on a peer evaluation if peers believe uh, them to be fundamentally subpar. Employees cannot feel a sense of belonging or, or as Google itself told us, thrive in an environment uh, where they do not feel psychologically safe. Uh, one of the uh, terms are used these days, but Google, not only Google, we uh, Facebook, there's a long list of these uh, people in a Silicon Valley uh, that are uh, doing this. But the problem is with these uh, publicly traded companies, particularly a company like Google that is in the ad business. They are, as John Lewis would say, playing uh, with fire. Defined boycott could put them out of business and make a substantial dent in their business on a worldwide uh, situation. Could you take Africans uh, in America and the diaspora? Way over a billion people not counting uh, China and India. So in other words, that is the world. The American play field here in North America is a small amount of it, but you have to look at the ever-changing cultural situation in America. The population demographic uh, changes. Let me just move on here. And this was, uh, I won't spend as much time on this. This is from The Guardian. Uh, four months ago, Google accused of extreme gender uh, pay discrimination by the U.S. Labor Department. Now, this is under uh, the administration of Barack Obama. Has discriminated against his female employees, according to the Labor Department, which said it has evidence of systematic compens- compensation discrepancies. Now, this puts the spotlight on Google beyond just the uh, bigot uh, there and the libertarian trends. Now, you have, in Silicon Valley, um, when the bubble was out there, you had a lot of opportunists uh, that came into open source, and we had discussions, very heated discussions, I'd say, with even the Red Hat people on their business model and how the libertarians um, influenced them and tried to uh, prostitute open source out. And this is why um, people at the Open Source Foundation correctly label the open source ep- effort as liberate efforts and again everything uh, tends to evolve we found systematic uh, compensation discrepancies against women pretty much across the entire workforce that's from Janice Whipler she's a, uh, she's a regional director of the Department of Labor Janet Harrell, uh, regional solicitor for the Department of Labor, said the investigation is not complete, but at this point the department has received compelling evidence of very significant discrimination against women in most common positions at Google's headquarters. The government's analysis at this point indicates discrimination against women uh, is a quite extent, and even in this industry now, it does go beyond that uh, period. Google is a federal contractor. This is something we would mentioned about not only Google, but Red Hat and Microsoft and many of these others, which means it's required to allow the uh, Department of Labor to inspect, copy records and information about its compliance with equal opportunity laws. Last year, the Department uh, Office of Federal 
contract compliance, requested Google and uh, salary, job history, etc. Google, however, repeated uh, repeatedly uh, re- refused to hand over the data, which is a violation of its contractual obligation. And uh, according to the lawsuit by the Department of Labor, after the suit was originally f- originally filed, a company spoke and claimed Google had uh, provided hundreds of thousands of records to the government and that the requests were overboard. Lisa uh, Sween, uh, one of the attorneys, testified in open in open remarks that uh, Department of Labor's request constituted a fishing expedition. That's the same thing. Uh, we've now elevated that to fake news on the DJ Trump. In a statement regarding Google, said uh, we vehemently disagree with uh, Whipper's uh, claim. Uh, every year we do compliance with they live. The company's uh, recently claimed that it. Uh, closed its gender policy, which was a lie. In September, they, they filed uh, a lawsuit against uh, Philantra, alleging it's systematically discriminated to another company. We won't get into that one, but now we get to it. In recent months, there have been uncertainty about the future of these kinds of uh, aggressive uh, Labor Department enforcement efforts on the DJ Trump. The president has rolled back... Uh, Obama area protection for female workers. Some uh, Department of Labor staff have raised uh, concerns, and Oracle executive joined the team. And the president, uh, close advisor, that's this uh, libertarian uh, Peter Threll. He was one of the founders of uh, PayPal, a German national, if that tells you anything. Google began releasing uh, diversity statistics in 2004 and reported last year that women make up 31% of its overall uh, workforce, and that only 2% were African-American, 3% Latino, uh, and Europeans account uh, for 60 or 59, 60%. Uh, Asians, I'm not sure how they define Asians, 32%, we get a little bit of it here. And Gizmo, uh, here is the uh, full uh, tin page, we'll append this. Uh, document here and let me just get to his in the memo the uh, personal opinions of a male uh, worker is entitled Google's ideological echo chamber let me just make sure that okay we will append this. I won't go over all of the ideological echo chamber. The author, the author argues that women are underrepresented in the tech, uh, in tech, not because of uh, face bias and discrimination in the workplace, but because of inherent uh, psychological differences. Oh boy. Here we go. Google's uh, political bias has uh, equated the. Uh, the freedom uh, from offense with a psychological safety, but sharing into silence is the antithesis of psychological s- safety. This silencing has uh, created uh, an ideological echo chamber where some ideas are too scarce to be honestly discussed. The lack of discussion uh, fosters the uh, most extreme and authoritarian elements in this ideology. Authoritarian. We uh, should uh, discriminate to correct this uh, oppression, uh, differences in uh, distribution of traits between uh, men and women may in part explain that we uh, don't have 50% representation of women in tech and a leadership discrimination reaches uh, to equal uh, to equal representation is unfair, divisive and bad for business. Well, in fact, it's actually good for business. I don't think this fellow understands what he's saying. But anyway, people generally have good intentions. This is the background to this. But uh, we have uh, biases which are uh, invisible to us. uh, Thankfully, open and honest uh, discussion with those who disagree can highlight our blind spots and help us to grow, which is why I wrote this document. Google has uh, several biases and uh, 
honest discussion about these biases is uh, being uh, sounded by the dominant ideology. Well, I hate to tell this fellow, uh, now we have a big discussion going on nationwide in America. What follows is uh, by no means a complete story, but is a perspective that desperately needs to be told. I remember that from somebody else when President Obama was there and we had various kooks that were opposing him. Nonetheless, the uh, Google biases. At Google, we talk so much about uh, unconscious bias as it applies to race and gender, but we rarely discuss our moral biases. Hmm, petty moralizing. Political orientation is actually a result of deep moral uh, preferences, thus biases. Considering that the overwhelming majority of uh, the uh, social sciences, media, Google leads left, we should uh, critically examine these uh, prejudices. Left biases, he calls them. Compassion for the weak. Discrepancies are due to injustices. Humans are inherently cooperative. Well, that is our whole theme when we come in here on Ubuntu. Uh, Nelson Mandela explains that, what Ubuntu is about. Now, that's an African concept. We won't uh, define it for Europeans. He will. Uh, change is good. Unstable, he says. Open, uh, idealistic. This is a left bias. Right, respect for strong authority. Well, Hitler loved that. Discrepancies are natural and just. Humans are inherently competitive. Not necessarily true. Change is dangerous, uh, closed, and a pragmatic. Now, pragmatic came to America, and America has marked on that. We we'll go back to Henry James. Neither side is 100% correct. Both viewpoints are uh, necessary uh, for, fun uh, for a functioning society, or in the case of this, a company. A company too far to the right may be uh, slow to react, or overly hier hierarch hierarchical and on trusting of others. In contrast, a company too far to the left will um, constantly be changing, uh, appreciating much-loved uh, uh, services over diversity uh, of diversifying, excuse me, its uh, diversity of its interests, ignoring or being ashamed of its core business, or overly trusting its uh, workers' uh, competitors. Only facts and reason can shed light on these biases, but when it comes to diversity and inclusion, Google's left bias has created a politically correct monoculture that maintains its hold by uh, shuttering a dissent into uh, silence. This uh, silence removes any uh, checks against uh, encroaching extremists and authoritarian policies. For the rest of this document, uh, I'll concentrate on the extreme stance that all uh, differences in the outcome are due to differences, differential treatment and the authoritarian element that requires actual discrimination uh, to create uh, equal representation. Oops. This is long, so I obviously can't get it all. Uh, men's a higher uh, drive for status we always ask why we don't see women in top leadership positions. Oh, boy. We've never asked why we uh, see so many men in these positions. These positions often require long, uh, stressful hours that uh, may uh, not be worth it if you uh, want a balanced and fulfilling life. This is the old argument that uh, women would not have a desire to lead and that women uh, are basically homemakers and uh, that they are into the child-rearing uh, business. I recently took an African hist uh, writer's course, and many of the same positions uh, were out in the bush where women were undervalued and basically were in the business of rearing uh, children, uh, male children, uh, preferably, and after that they were uh, not uh, taken very seriously. The status is primary uh, metric that men are judged only uh, pushing uh, many men into these higher uh, paying uh, less uh, satisfying jobs for their status uh, that uh, entail uh, note uh, the uh, same uh, forces that lead men into higher uh, paying and higher stress jobs 
in a tech and leadership cause men to take undesirable and dangerous jobs like coal mining, garbage collection, and firefighting and suffer 90% of the work related to, I hate to tell him, firefighting uh, is becoming more and more a gender neutral uh, position. Now, on the East Coast, yes, we still have some of the old things going around there. Uh, coal mining has been diminished. Garbage uh, collection, I hate to tell him there, uh, since Dr. King led the uh, sanitation workers strike in Memphis, that has changed a lot also. And it's not as dangerous now because of mechanism. Anyway, no discriminatory way to reduce uh, gender gaps. Uh, below, I'm going into some of the differences in the distribution of talents between men and women that I outlined in the previous section there. Women on the average show a higher interest in people and men in of uh, things. Not necessarily. We can make software engineering uh, more people-oriented with uh, paired programs and more collaboration. Unfortunately, there would uh, be limits to how people orient certain roles. Google can be, and we shouldn't deceive ourselves as students into thinking otherwise some of our programs to get female students into coding might be uh, doing this. Women on the average are more cooperative. I would not uh, doubt that. You have to cooperate to be a mother. I guess his mother was very cooperative. Allowing uh, these uh, exhibiting uh, cooperative behavior to thrive. Recently update uh, This doesn't mean that we should remove all uh, competitive uh, forms from uh, Google. Well, when you're working in teams, now you are talking perhaps about teams being, or words team A, team B, all being competitive. Yes, that would uh, that would happen. Competitiveness and uh, self-reliance uh, can uh, be. Uh, A valuable trait, and we uh, shouldn't necessarily disadvantage those uh, that have them, like uh, what has been done in education. Women, on the average, are more prone uh, to anxiety. How does he know that? He's evidently a psychologist. Women, on the average, look uh, for more uh, work life balance, while men, uh, high drivers, well, that's a myth within itself. DJ Trump claimed that he uh, would never holiday. Now he's on, what, a three week holiday or whatever. Unfortunately, as long as, and this is something that's overblown, that CEOs are working hard 24-7, very few are. Now, you have entrepreneur types that are starting out enterprises that work uh, long hours in the beginning, but uh, they seem to go into retirement. Unfortunately, as long as tech and leadership remains uh, high status, lucrative careers, men uh, may disproportionately want to be in them. Well, those things start to change. Uh, male uh, gender roles is currently uh, inflexible. Uh, Feminism has made great progress in freeing women from uh, female uh, gender roles, but men are still uh, very much tied uh, to uh, male gender roles. If we as a society allow men to be more feminized, then the uh, gender gap will, uh, strip, uh, will shrink. Well... Yeah, I was told by a person uh, I was interviewing as a poster many years ago that the society he said was moving to a more, quote-unquote, effeminate society. And you trace it back to languages. In some languages, you have there is uh, not a way to have, say, a, a feminine form uh, of a, a noun. But we won't get into that. That's in French we uh, we strongly believe in gender and uh, a lie and racial diversity. Programs of mentoring and uh, classes only for people with certain gender. Uh, he calls these discriminatory. This is basically what America makes uh, make America great again. Trump is talking high priority uh, cues and special treatment for diversity candidates. Well, yes and no. I can recall from an Android developers conference that uh, Google makes an attempt. They have made a particular attempt at uh, the uh, gender gap uh, remedies there, at least from a PR standpoint, but not in terms of racial diversity at all. Jesse Jackson has talked about this in Operation Push. Why are we blind? 
we all have biases. We use uh, motivational reasoning uh, to discuss ideas that uh, run counter to internal our internal values. But uh, as the same on uh, the right uh, denial of science that runs a counter to God, humans, environment, hier- hierarchy. Uh, evolution and climate change at the left uh, tends to deny uh, science concerning biological differences between uh, people, sexual differences. Thankful climate scientists and environmental uh, biologists uh, generally aren't on the right. Unfortunately, the overwhelming majority of humanities, social scientists, lean left about 95%. I kind of doubt that. Noting some things. Suggestions. I hope uh, I, I hope it is clear that I'm not saying uh, that diversity is bad. That Google our society is 100% fair. We should uh, try to correct for uh, shouldn't try to correct for existing biases. Demoralize diversity. For diversity. Excuse me. As soon as we start to demoralize an issue, a moralizing issue, we stop thinking about it in terms of. Course and benefits, boy, from the accountant's book we come. Villains to protect the villains, anyway. Stop alienating conservatives. Viewpoint diversity is arguably the most uh, important type of diversity, and political orientation is one of the uh, fundamental and significant ways in which people view things differently. In a highly uh, uh, progressive environment, conservatives are a minority that uh, feel like they need uh, to stay in the closet to avoid open hostility. Well, they're in the Internet business, which in itself is more a left of center. I, most, uh, I mostly concentrate on how uh, bias clouds our thinking about diversity and inclusion, but our uh, moral uh, biases are uh, further, uh, further reaching than that. I started by breaking down uh, the uh, Googleistic uh, scores by political orientation and personality. Won't get into that. We'll pinch this. It's very, very long. Let me just finish this up. Reconsidering making uh, unconscious biases and training mandatory for uh, promo committees. Before our opening our science of human nature, we uh, once we acknowledge that uh, not all differences are societally constructed. This is the environmental article due to discrimi- our due discrimination. We open our eyes to a more accurate view of a human condition that is necessary. We actually want to solve the problems. Well, this thinking has been around. I remember once, uh, I think on direct exam, yeah, it was on direct exam, of a uh, PR uh, type and, uh, excuse me, of a human relations, uh, human resources type. And he said, well, all people have a prejudice. Same argument. This is back in the 70s and we're still arguing in 2007. So about the Google, uh, Googler's Manifesto. This is another one here from the Medium. This is from... Uh, Zinger. This is an analysis. So what about the uh, Google uh, Manifesto? You probably heard about the Manifesto from some Googler, not someone uh, senior. Well, we don't know. Until a week ago, you would have heard little from uh, me publicly about it. This is um, your Tander Zingler. Anyway, but as it happens... um, for an entirely unrelated and uh, actually really good news reason, uh, why uh, I'll get into it elsewhere. Elsewhere, excuse me. So all of this broke. Uh, I know uh, what was written uh, is only because it leaked and was published to Gizmo. In other words, it would have stayed in the dark. It seems someone uh, had seen uh, fit to publish internal manifesto about gender and our ideological echo chamber. Despite speaking very authoritatively, the author doesn't appear to understand gender. Perhaps more interestingly, the author does not appear to understand engineering. Now, this is very important. He doesn't. 
and uh, more seriously, the author doesn't appear to understand the consequences of what he wrote, either for others or himself. I'm not going to spend any length of time on it. That is good. But uh, I am uh, neither a biologist, a psychologist, or, nor a sociologist. I'll leave that to someone else. What I am is an engineer, and I'm uh, rather surprised that anyone has managed uh, to make this uh, make it this far without understanding some very basic uh, points of in, uh, about what the job is. The manifesto talks about making software engineers more people-oriented uh, with uh, par programs and programming and more collaboration, but this is fundamentally limited by how people orient uh, certain roles, and Google can be even more surprisingly, you have an entire uh, section titled De-Emphasizing Empathy. People who haven't done engineering are people who have jobs just, uh, who have uh, done just the basics, sometimes I think, but what engineering looks like is setting it your computer, uh, hyper-optimizing an internal loop, cleaning up a class, uh, API, We've all done this uh, kind of thing, but for many of us, including me, it is uh, tremendous fun. When you're a novice, uh, when you're, you're at a novice stage of engineering, this is the bulk of your work, uh, no doubt about it. Something is straightforward and bonded, uh, which it can be uh, done right or done wrong uh, when you, you can... Uh, home your skills but it's not coincidental that your job title as a Google switch uh, from a numbers to words at a certain point this is precise point at which uh, you have a way and completed your first apprenticeship you operate independently without close supervision this is a point where you start doing a real engineering engineering is not the art of building devices it is the art of fixing problems Devices are means, not the end. Fixing problems means, first of all, you understand them. It's one thing you learn as a developer. Since of the whole process of doing things, uh, we can do it uh, to fix problems in the outside world, problems involving people, problems uh, that means understanding people. The way in which they uh, interact uh, with your system is fundamental. That's why we have testing to every step of building a system. This is so key that we have uh, bunches of entire job ladders, uh, PMers and uh, UXs and so on that have done uh, nothing but specialize in these problems. The present presence of specialists doesn't mean engineers are off the hook. Far from an engineer, leaders absolutely need to understand the product deep. It's a, jo- a core job requirement. Essentially, engineering is all about uh, cooperation. This is a back to Ubuntu. Collaboration and empathy for both your colleagues and your customers. Very important. If someone told you that engineering was a field where you get away with not dealing with people or feeling uh, them, then I'm sorry to tell you that uh, you have been lied to. Solidarity work is a... Oh, solitary work, I'm sorry, is at the uh, junior uh, level, uh, levels, and uh, even then, it's only possible because someone's senior to you. Most likely, your manager has uh, been putting in long hours to build up the social structure in your group that uh, lets you focus on code. Of these traits, which um, manifest, uh, the f- uh, manifesto describes as female, are the core traits which someone's successful at engineering someone who is successful anyone who can learn how to write code that's true the code camps do that hell by uh, sometimes someone reaches uh, L7 or so it's expected that they have a reasonable complete mastery of the technique true hard uh, parts about the job are knowing which codes to write that's what we call software architects building of the clear path to what's to be done in order to achieve which goals and build the uh, consensus required to make them happen. And she's numbering these. I, I'm going to skip on. I, 
I'll put this up here and I'll end this up we hope nearly but uh, not everyone uh, is very important truth statement which the manifesto mix is a jail uh, excuse me male agenda rose uh, remain highly flexible and that is a bug it's not a feature in fact I suspect this is uh, the core bug which uh, purports everything else within the manifesto to be written the rest of the manifesto is basically about optimizing around the existence of this bug. You don't optimize your bugs, you fix them. Now, this is interesting. She put this to a bug. I'm writing here this message because uh, I'm no longer at the company. You can uh, say this is a sort of thing openly, but uh, I want to make it very clear if you were in uh, my uh, reporting chain or of all parts, you would have been replaced with the short. This is not acceptable. And maybe your last paragraph above. You wouldn't have heard uh, in a uh, in much of a small meeting. <coughs> excuse me, including uh, me, someone from legal and HR. The fact that you think this uh, was all in the name of open discussion, and don't realize that any deep consequences made, and no doubt this person will be uh, looked upon in a quiet manner. Our company is a committed to maintaining good environment for all people, and if one person is determined to follow that, the solution is pretty clear. In other words, they get the door. So this is uh, where uh, she came in with this. Uh, some remarks. We are no doubt evolving, but the national discussion on uh, gender, race, affirmative action has all come to Google. And Google's a culture. And now it will no doubt uh, play out much larger than Google. They will be in uh, Silicon Valley. Some uh, people that are apologists uh, for the way in which people are uh, treated uh, in the tech industry as a whole. But the tech industry, depending on what company you are engaged with... If you engage with Microsoft or Google or Facebook or Twitter, any of these companies that have vast public exposure, you're in trouble. And even if you're into some of the so-called developing technologies that represent things, your hiring numbers are going to be looked at in terms, even if, say, for instance, you have a person of color leading it or the CEO, look at your workforce and how it's implemented. This has put Silicon Valley in not the best spot, and that it's highlighted in what Trump calls the Amazon Washington Post. It is now a national argument, and that is why at WBRN Radio we presented this across the networks. And eventually it will uh, arrive on all of our networks, uh, period including the political show Boston Red. But now we're at the open source uh, report, and uh, it will be on, uh, I believe, on a number of outlets, YouTube, etc., uh, Spreaker, and iHeart uh, as one of the major networks. Nonetheless, uh, this will do it uh, for us uh, today on the 6th of August. 2017. M.A. signing off. Good day.